And here we are going uh, online, although it's recorded, but I'm pretty sure everybody already knows that. Good evening, because by the time we launch this edition, it's going to be evening when you're going to be watching this. And welcome to the eighth episode of Alumni Spotlight hosted by Mark Twain International School. And I'm super, super happy to have today as guest Diana Lovin joining us from Bristol. Hey. Hi, guys. Super, super happy that uh, that you managed to, to join us today. And I hope you're doing well, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to get to know how well and how exciting your life is as yeah. a student in Bristol in the middle of a global pandemic. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. It's uh, it's really nice to be here, and yeah, hopefully we'll get something out of this, like all of us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's what's gonna be happening. So don't don't stress about it. And uh, thank you to everyone for joining again. This is our eighth episode. I'm once again your host Hans. I'm pretty sure uh, you already know that by by now. We we started with the idea that we're gonna go with with a, a program that's based on four episodes, but here we are at the eighth episode and yeah, pretty much things are going smoothly till now. And I'm really, really happy to be doing this today with you, Diana. Uh, by the way, as an intro to, to Diana, uh, she graduated in 2018. So class of 2018. And currently, she's studying in Bristol as uh, at uh, at the Professional Musicianship Vocals course at BIM Institute of Bristol, right? Yeah. Cool. That's that's pretty. I mean, I'm always super happy to have all our guests, but I'm always super excited to have artists on our on our episodes because it's a professional flaw. Blame it on that. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm not wrong, last time I saw you, it was probably on your graduation day at Mark Twain in 2018. Yeah, ages ago. I, I remember that day. It was amazing. Yeah, I remember it was uh, the graduation uh, process plus a small concert like thing that the school organized and I think we were in backstage with uh, I was in the backstage with you and Joanna and you were preparing to sing uh, one of your own creations if I'm not wrong yeah I, I don't know if that was on a graduation or that might have been a while back maybe it was kind of a, a festival or something that Joe um, arranged and put together um, but yeah, I think anyway, that was ages ago. And <laughs> yeah, time flies. Yeah. And hopefully time flies when you're having fun. So we're going to get to know how much fun you've been having as a student in Bristol. But before we get to that, I think we could start up with a more warm up uh, question. So drum rolls for our first question for you. Uh, by the way, do people call you Diana or Diana over there? Um, I kind of introduce myself as Diana because they have a bit of a different accent. So they say Diana, like, like Diane, but with a twist on it. So I'm just, yeah, it's, you know, whatever you like, if you like Diana more than Diana. Cool. Yeah. Stick to the princess vibe. <laughs> princess vibes <laughs> yeah so my first question for you would be if you could go back in time during when I say time I'm talking about your educational years uh, to which grade would you go back to and why exactly would you do that wow um, I think I would go back to my last year of high school. I think that went really quick because um, I, I remember that we were done with exams in sort of end of April. So mm -hmm. I wish I had a bit more time to kind of take in that experience and 
be with everyone again, with the teachers and my classmates. I think it all went a bit too fast and we were so stressed about the exams <laughs> that we kind of forgot to live in that moment for a bit longer. Yeah, I, I, I totally, and I want to mention again to everyone following us today or last week or the week before it's that or next week, these questions are not sent prior to the interview to our to our alumni. So do you know why I mentioned that? Is because a lot of people talk about they either go super back to their first years at Mark Twain or school in general, or they go back to the last years. And when I say last years, I think you, you obviously I think I know you were part of the IB program. So yeah. I totally understand understand that because last week I was talking to Yasmina Saraj with also Claudio Saraj and Yasmina was mentioning how how finishing the IB exams literally made you feel like a huge rock or 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 an entire mountain was lifted off your shoulders yes. after you're done with with everything. Yes, and uh, actually I was thinking about this the other day because right now I'm in the process of writing my dissertation and all my final assessments and it's taking me back to when I was doing the IB and I can't remember that feeling after I was done with all of the exams and I was just ready to enjoy the summer and I look forward to like the same feeling again because it's so much that you have to do in such a small amount of time in uni and I feel like it's gonna be again like something has been lifted that I don't know like I'll be reborn or something. <laughs> yeah I can totally relate to that. I, I think it, it, it's uh, it's that silence before the storm, but but sometimes in this case, it's like the other way around. You know that, that there's gonna be that silence after the storm or there's gonna be the rainbow after all the storm. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's really, uh, sometimes we have to come to an end of something to find the inspiration and the power to start something new. And, and I really hope that you're, your uh, final months of uni get to get to go past in a super smoothly manner and you get through everything brilliantly which i'm sure you're gonna do because that's how our generations at mark twain do it we just stick to it and give our best and hopefully reach not hopefully we reach where we want to reach sooner or later yeah i agree uh, I know you're studying music, so naturally my following question will probably go in that direction. And the question would be, at what age did you realize that you want to transform your passion for music into more than just passion? Yeah. Um, well, I think I was, obviously, I've done music most of my life. I started when I was eight. Um, I used to sing in a choir and I think that even though I didn't really know it back then, I think in myself I, I knew that I wanted to pursue this as a career mm -hmm. and um, sort of around like in, in the high school years um, a lot of people were kind of asking me do you want to do music um are you sure you want to be doing this obviously because everyone knows that it's very hard to m make money out of music and you know I just stuck with it I was like no that's that's what I want to do I am a creative person so there's no point in throwing that away to do something I don't like as much so yeah so it was your high school years. Yeah, that that was the de defini definitive moment when I knew I wanted to do music. And uh, you prob obviously took uh, um, music as one of your IB courses, right? Yeah, music high level. 
Oh yeah, high level. Whenever we say that high level, we know that the amount of stress and yes. work <laughs> is going to be next level. <laughs> yeah. And it's super funny because most of the time we pick those courses based on our passion towards that precise course or not. And most of the people that choose especially anything from the arts category of uh, exams at IB think that if you only have the passion or if you're talented, that's all you need to do to get through a course. <laughs> And then you choose the course, especially higher level, and you're like, oh, wow, this was more than I anticipated, because I remember having the same reaction when I chose uh, drama as, uh, as one of those uh, higher level courses. And I was really shocked to see that <laughs> my talent isn't enough to just get me through those courses. You have to really, really, really dive in depth to actually go through that uh, course, right? Yeah, I agree, totally agree with that. I, I think that, you know, we should kind of change this mentality of thinking about the arts as like a hobby sort of thing, you know, so it's like everyone can do it. Of course, everyone can do it, but it's not like that, especially when it comes to IB, you have to really be passionate about it but also want to study in depth as you said yeah amen to that <laughs> this, is, this is your one-on-one -on -one course about normalizing uh, and validating art as, yeah. <laughs> as more than a hobby <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally understand that because you also mentioned by uh, the fact that uh, there was a lot of debate that you probably heard from your family and friends about how art isn't necessarily the, the trajectory that can secure you a financially safe future. But as we've been saying on these sessions of Q&A with our alumni, if you know you can do it, if you trust yourself and you stick with your own guts, you're going to make it and money will follow. Yeah, <laughs> totally agree with that. So uh, what uh, would attract, like which part of the package that BIM Institute of Bristol, uh, which, what made you choose that, that specific university for your uh, for your BA? Well, um, I, I didn't want to go to like a conservatory or something that pushed me into like a niche. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked at BIM and I, I thought, you know, they offer a range of, of modules. Um, mm -hmm you learn about all the areas of music obviously you have a um your you can choose to go on on vocals or guitar or music production you know whatever suits you but you still learn about music as a whole and you kind of interact with everyone um and it's it felt like when i went to the open day it felt like it's not it's like an open place for everyone and even though some people might not be as skilled in you know playing guitar or whatever they want to make you better and you know they i don't know it's just a very open and friendly place and it's for modern music um mm -hmm. it's actually it means british irish modern music institute so it's for modern music and i you know i thought i want to do something that's current i didn't want to go to like opera or anything like that okay so there 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 uh there there were <laughs> their way of teaching is uh slightly uh directed towards a more modern approach to music compared to a more classical training of music yeah yeah and, and they allow you to go in whatever way you want you know you don't have to learn like the the classical way of singing or you know what I mean mm -hmm. you can just do your thing 
So a more experimental approach to to finding yeah. your own voice, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I I can totally imagine that uh, uh, that the the whole pandemic uh, situation kind of made things more more interesting than than they already are. So. I was uh, gonna ask you, how is it to be a student in the middle of a first uh, global pandemic situation with which we're dealing as as Generation Z, millennials, whatever we want to call call ourselves? Yeah. How was your how like how how was your entire experience as as a student abroad? Uh, in your situation in Bristol in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah, so I obviously did one year and a half before all this started. And then last year, I was in my second year, kind of um, around the time when we had assessments and exams. And um, back then, most of it was like performance-based. Um, we had a few essays to write, but it was mostly performance based. So that kind of had to change and it changed drastically. And uh, everyone was so anxious and was like, what is happening? What do we get out of this? Um, but I think my university pulled it off really well in terms that they had to look at all of the assessments and they like shaped it after what was happening at the time and obviously it meant that we wouldn't be able to like collaborate anymore we wouldn't be in bands or we wouldn't be able to meet up with people um so it was kind of an individual thing um but at the time i felt really positive about that because I thought you know what, I'll be at home I'll have more time to study and just focus on myself um so that part went really well but then when I got in my third year and I kind of went to uni for like a few weeks and then they they had to put a lockdown again um so I was kind of sad I was thinking like wow I'm gonna spend my last year of uni in lockdown um, so that was kind of daunting. Um, and I haven't gone to uni since probably like November, maybe. I haven't stepped in the campus. Um, so that's not nice, but they put it, they like have loads of funding and they um, gave students basically everything they needed to continue learning and continue like making music mm -hmm. inside our homes um so that was really nice uh and yeah now it's kind of like a mixed environment at the moment mm -hmm. but uh, most vocalists have everything online because we're kind of more at risk um if we get the virus it's not like very pretty we might even lose our voices and not be able to to perform as well so they thought you know we'll just keep everything online but they also put a package in place um for third years that's basically like you get another year of uni so mm -hmm. you get to go to all the master classes you get to um be in the campus and use the facilities so that's really nice i think we lost a lot, so we had to kind of get it back somehow. Okay, that that's pretty interesting. I mean, and I, well, it's pretty much uh, it's obvious that uh, compared to any other technical ish course that you would choose or profession, obviously there are some some things which is your case, vocal training, that you actually need to be there. You actually need to be, because obviously as, as hard as you try to, to have these sessions uh, online, I do imagine that uh, singing in front of a camera without having a full on production team to make sure that, uh, that everything is 100% accurate, what you transmit from home, 
from a basic room to a teacher that's somewhere in a classroom or at home in front of a camera assessing your your skills or your progress. So I can only imagine that compared to, I don't know, studying something like no hate for anyone, <laughs> but for example, <laughs> studying accounting at home or going at a university that's specialized in accounting or business or anything is com way different than, I don't know, as you mentioned, uh, practical performing arts such as theater, music, or, yeah. or, 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 or arts in general, or uh, I even imagine med school the same, like good luck practicing <laughs> med school yeah. at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's just, you know, it's the community that makes it what it is. And if you're not in a room with people actually practicing, you know, jamming along, it's like, what are you doing? You're just, it's like singing in the shower, for example. <laughs> Which is nice, but it's not the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I can, I talk, before you said like the, the word jamming, I was like, there is, you, you have to feel the vibe yeah <laughs> and like the, it's it's really hard to explain to to someone that doesn't necessarily understand that feeling but once you're in, you're in a room with creative people and you all get to synchronize your your feelings that you manage to transmit through your art like th there's nothing that can compare to that yeah. uh and and you really need that 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 cozy safe zone in which you get to express your art form yeah yeah so i i mean at least you got because i was talking to people that got to to university right as the pandemic started and their experience isn't necessarily uh the brightest one <laughs> But at least you got to experience uh, being a student abroad uh, or being a student in general, but especially uh, in an environment uh, such as the one that you, you mentioned that BIM, which, which sounds totally something that, for example, I would love to do. Yeah. Uh, so at least you managed to do that and I really hope that that, they, that extra year that they're uh, they're offering for you to actually interact with the, the facilities that they have on campus and everything else that they do offer you managed to get to experience that uh, extra year so does that mean that technically speaking you're gonna stick to four years for your BA no, so I will get my degree mm -hmm. this year. Okay. Um, and then the extra year is kind of, um, it's kind of for just alumni to experience. It's not like uh, I'm doing four years. Okay. My degree, so yeah, it's just three years, and then I don't know what they call it to be honest. So uh, if I understood right, you graduate now. So it's the fourth year is only to take advantage, let's say, yeah. of everything the campus has to offer in yeah, order yeah. for you to be able to experiment and practice your skills more. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty cool because obviously I'm pretty sure that everyone that signed up for BIM uh, probably did it to, to be able to use all of the all the tools that the university has to yeah. offer to their students so that's that's pretty that's pretty cool and i hope that other people i don't know if university people are watching but if you are watching make sure to to show some extra love to your students because i'm pretty sure that everyone does appreciate their efforts to actually properly adapt to the pandemic because sadly mm -hmm. sometimes it feels like we're sitting at home, we're not the experts, and we're like, what are you people doing? Like, yeah. what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, why why did, did you choose UK? Like, was there a specific reason why you chose UK? Because I know, for example, I think that uh, if I'm not wrong, BIM has other, uh, other 
countries or also cities in which they have uh, they have uh, campuses. Uh, what made you choose uh, UK? So yeah, they they have um, a campus in Berlin, um, and they also have one in Ireland, and then most of them are based in England. Um, but I chose UK because first my um, older sister studied here and obviously when I was younger I got to kind of see the world here um, and then from traveling around I thought you know they have a, a pretty good education education system and I knew I wanted to go into like an English speaking country um, and yeah I mean I kind of I didn't really look at other places to be honest outside mm -hmm. of the UK just because I was thinking you know it's a pretty good place to start with music um, it's not like going to America or um, going to like a smaller country it's a pretty standard place to start and the people are really nice um, yeah like, yeah I mean you you mentioned because I I think I I, I mean I, I asked this question and then then I was trying to to <laughs> to try to understand I, I mean like trying to answer instead of you Mahela I'm like what well, I mean learning German isn't easy no <laughs> so <laughs> obviously uh Berlin I mean there are a lot of stereotypes about Germany but uh, Berlin doesn't like it there's nothing that can connect the standard German stereotypes that we all grew up hearing. Like, like the stereotypes in Berlin do not match. Berlin yeah. is totally wild and uh, it, it's, it's, I, it's so different. And there's a really, really creative and free energy to it. Yeah. But I totally understand. <laughs> Why, why you, you chose the UK path. I mean, I think any creative person, especially people that, that are into music, uh, if you get to London and you get to watch a musical there, you will totally understand why UK is, is, is an option in, in this whole creative industry, especially music, because they know how to put on a production. So yeah. Uh, you, did you get to see any musicals in, in... um ages ago um in London but I mean don't judge me here I don't <laughs> like musicals that much <laughs> I do appreciate the art form but it's not for me <laughs> yeah I mean there's a lot of dramatic things going on and, and, and I've, I've heard you singing and I mean, get like at least a sample of, of what you want to present. Plus I come from a creative background too and I see your aesthetic and, and uh, the way you present uh, yourself as an artist also with the clothing that you wear. So I, I totally understand why, <laughs> why, why, why Alphaba in the, in the Wizard of Oz isn't necessarily your, your jam, so. Not my cup of tea now. <laughs> yeah, literally, but but yeah, I mean, obviously, anyone can at least appreciate the way they put on the show and how everything yeah. is is tailored flawlessly to make sure that the audience gets the best experience that they they could have in I don't know forty, fifty, one hour or two hours uh, of a show. So yeah. I will write it down. Uh, Diana and musicals, not a match. <laughs> so, match. <laughs> so uh, my question. Obviously, you you did mention uh, what what's gonna go on um, partially next. But which are your plans uh, for after you graduate uh, uni? Like, what are you, like, I, I know we're living really crazy times, so it's really hard to pinpoint, like, this is what I'm going to do, and this is 1000% what I'm going to do, but what's the, like, what would you like to do? 
Yeah, so I would like to go do a master's. Um, uh, well, I'm kind of set on the idea, but as you said, who knows what's going to happen. It might change. But I know I want to do a master's in something that's music production related. Um, so I found a um, course at Bath Spa University, uh, which is not very far from Bristol. So mm-hmm. that's good because I can still live here for another year and um, and then see if I can move around maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do a master's in sound arts. Um and I kind of want to have a little business of my own um, that's not music related, just so I could like fuel this passion mm-hmm. and career, I guess. But I think it's really good to um, start a bit of business right now. Um, obviously, when everything kind of starts to open again, um, yeah, I want. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is now because I don't want to jinx it. But I'm gonna do a thing on my own. Um, and yeah, just keep. I want to put out an EP after I finish my assessments. Um, this summer, and just continue with my performances. Maybe if we're gonna be allowed to to sing anywhere anytime yeah. soon. So yeah. Okay, so we're not gonna address the business that you're gonna start, but whatever it is, I wish you all the best of luck in the world. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the school will also be excited and I'm pretty sure also your colleagues to see what you're gonna come up with and mm. and we're gonna do our best to show our, our love to your new business and hopefully it all works out uh, well. And one of the reasons why we do these sessions of Q&A is to actually try to inspire or try to clarify some directions for future alumni that want to choose the path, for example, in, in, in what you're doing in music and vocals and mm-hmm. uh, creative arts. And you did mention the sounds arts uh, master's degree. Uh, can you say a few words about that? Because I'm pretty sure it, it sounds really, really like there sounds like a huge umbrella that might cover yeah. a lot of things. But if you know anything you would like to share for anyone that's, I don't know, probably at home and maybe considering a master's degree, because I feel like, I mean, you also did mention that you don't know, like we don't all know what's going to happen tomorrow. And a lot of people have been stuck at home and they have been really considering or reconsidering or changing my, their minds about their their careers. So it's really, really helpful to give them more insight about things they could pursue. Yeah, yeah so um, the reason why I'm thinking about a master's now, even though some people might argue that it's not the best time to do a master's or yeah to do something new um because it might get shut down or you might not get to get the full experience Mm -hmm. i think that like going straight out of uni into a master's is the best thing that you can do because you're still in that mindset of like learning about things and you you have the ability to really go into um doing a master's with like loads of knowledge because you've just done your degree um so yeah this is why I wouldn't like I don't want to wait another year Mm -hmm. or whatever to do a master's when things will be like settled again um and this particular master's it's yeah as you said it's kind of a broad thing which Mm -hmm. is why I like it because afterwards you can go into into loads of different um spaces like you can design sound for film for media you can do loads of things with it um you can do even experimental stuff um like i don't know about soundscape or recording natural sounds for different things mm-hmm. um and it's also 
we can go into more like a commercial area with it so you can still make music for artists you can produce re your own music um yeah i that's pretty much what i've been told obviously i don't know exactly mm -hmm. um how it's going to how it's going to be run but they also have loads of great facilities they just invested loads of money into their facilities so everything is brand new um they have loads of studios um you get to work with people from um other creative areas like mm -hmm. or for drama or for film um singers songwriters yeah i totally i, I mean uh it's funny because at one point i was talking to other alumni about uh, choosing different paths and why they tend to choose uh for example courses or universities or master's degrees uh, that cover more areas. It's because people are being smart and I think you're being smart about it too and keeping your options open mm -hmm. and choosing uh, tools to enhance your own uh, educational path in yeah. a way in which you can adapt to, to, to yeah. anything that can actually happen tomorrow. And, and, and it's, Plus, I feel like the world is constantly evolving, especially when it comes to creative arts. And mm -hmm. I feel like even the fact that we all got stuck in a pandemic at home for over a year, and apparently it's still going on. Uh, and it, it, it's we're, we're trying to adapt to, to a new digital era. So I feel like yeah. it's really smart to actually go towards uh, a direction that gives you more than just one option because yeah when I think when you choose one single option it's really it's harder like when you have to rebrand your own direction into future it's it's harder to gamble with one card compared mm -hmm. to when you have a full pack of options that can give you, that can open doors for you towards several directions. And I, I feel like uh, that's a really, really, really smart way of choosing what to do. So I really hope that works out well. And yes, the fact that they invest in new tech, new campuses, uh, new recording studios and everything, there's, I, I feel like, yeah, there's always uh, an excitement when it comes to vintage stuff or stuff that's old because whatever is old has like uh, a dust of someone else's experience over it. Yeah. So you experience that too. But when something's new, <laughs> it's like a fresh book that you buy, a new book that you buy. There's that smell of like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to... Because probably also... Uh, are thinking of the fact that they're super new tech that you're going to also use and they're like super contemporary things that you get to experience. But I also I think that the fact that you're closer to uh, to BIM is also helpful because you did mention that you'll still have that one extra year of being able to take advantage of two campuses that offer offer you an environment to safely create in yeah so that's pretty pretty cool uh and i think one of my last questions for you would be what would be your own advice to our future generations of kids watching at home and not not as not only the students of mark twain but anyone that's interested in watching this uh this edition of alumni spotlight our eighth episode uh what would be your advice as a creative person that's trying to to deal with this whole overwhelming situation and still staying strong wow uh well the first thing i would say is don't um don't be stressed about it don't be stressed about you know i mean do learn and like be interested in in loads of things and um 
want to better yourself but also just remember that you're in a stage in your life that you need to take advantage of and you need to have fun um obviously keep a balance between fun and going out and being with friends with what you have to learn because what you have to learn is really important it's going to take you loads of in loads of places and it's going to make you better as a person um be open another advice that would be I mean, be open as in, be open to opportunities, um, be open to new knowledge and yeah, don't, don't stress about your life right now because it's going to get a whole lot crazier when you go into university um, and you're going to have to be on your own and deal with loads of stuff. So just enjoy the stage that you're in right now because is the most precious thing and you're gonna want to go back to it all the time mm -hmm. yeah I, I i totally relate to to what you what you said and it's funny that we always as teenagers look up to growing up and always oh i can't wait to be a grown-up i can't yeah. wait to take my own decisions i can't wait to do this and i'm like once you do that, you're like, oh God, it was slightly a trap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and you said it perfectly. Just try to enjoy as much as you can that precise time frame you're stuck with. So if you're a high schooler, just enjoy that. Don't think about what you have to do. I mean, yeah, thinking about your future is important, but never forget to enjoy the day you're living so i i yeah. I, I second your idea with uh, living the day that you're given yeah and... don't be um like sad about like you know getting a bad grade or that your friends didn't want to go out with you just you know you do you and just enjoy everything because it's like a very short time that you're gonna get it for so yeah yeah that's that's super true and whenever you feel because you did mention the the small grade like we we sometimes put so much pressure on ourselves to to perform at 110 percent that uh sadly when things don't work out the way we want we end up beating ourselves down a lot. And I feel that uh, a lot of people have been challenged with this during the whole pandemic situation because uh, we've been literally isolated with ourselves and we're social creatures, as antisocial as we might consider ourselves. <laughs> It's funny that, that the word came to me without uh, actually realizing that you have it written on your shirt because as social as I may 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 be, uh, I also have my parts in which during which I'm like, I have to be left alone to yeah, to recharge. Yeah, and just put put my own puzzle pieces apart and then try to mm -hmm. reconnect everything and to go back to my own roots. So, Whoever is watching and feels like they're they're having any kind of meltdown or confusion, just embrace it and don't kick yourself. Because at the end of the day, if there is one person we have to make happy and proud, it's ourselves. Yeah. And sometimes the universe it, to to which we project our desires and dreams might take us places which we do not understand. And years later, you might realize that something that made you feel uh, sad or put down for a certain decision or thing that happened in your life was actually put there to make you grow. Because mm -hmm. I don't think we can grow without being, without be feeling any pressure. So sometimes we are our own pressure and make sure that your own pressure helps you to grow and not put you down. So self-love is the number one thing we want to project mm -hmm. now yeah and i hope you you do you do relate to what i said 
especially as a creative person that's that's been dealing with this whole whole crazy one and something years of our lives Mm -hmm. yeah I do relate to that self-love and self-care is the way the way to 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 make it work yeah so pretty much that's all I had prepared uh, for you today and I'm more than happy to have managed to catch up with you and your career and your journey and I really hope that uh, things work out work out amazingly in your favor and uh, in your future businesses flavor favor and flavor because I feel like everything that ha has to have a flavor yeah. and I'm pretty sure that your personality will give your future brand your own flavor and and I really really hope that things work out great for you and for your master's degree and also thank you you're always welcomed in the Mark Twain family and and whenever you're back home and things are slightly less chaotic, you're more than welcome to visit the school. Yeah, hopefully this year, because I, I really I haven't been home in in a year, a bit over a year. I haven't seen my family face to face in a year. So that's one thing that I really look forward to. I want to go back to um the campus and just see everyone and you know kind of I don't know I have this nostalgic feeling when I when I think about it and I I don't know it just makes me so happy nostalgia is totally on trend so we're all embracing it. Yeah. <laughs> so for everyone watching at home thank you for tuning in uh it's this is going to be on a Monday evening, so we hope that you all have a super wonderful week ahead of you, and I hope that it gets sunny in the UK too, and in, in Bucharest too, and whenever you're watching, and, and we really hope that you enjoyed this session as much as I enjoyed talking to our today's guest, Diana Logan, and I'm super, super happy that we managed to have this chat. And super okay. grateful that you took time of your busy schedule to actually join us. So thank you once more for joining our eighth episode of Alumni Spotlight organized by Mark Twain International School. So thank you, thank you, thank you again for, for joining Vienna. And I hope that we get to, to see each other at the school hopefully this summer soon. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. And take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.